I think it's going to change enormously uh, because of the Queen's very, very long reign. When she became Queen in 1952, she was a young woman, a glamorous young woman, uh, in her mid-twenties, only fairly recently married. Whereas Prince Charles, who's waited uh, such a long time for the succession, when he becomes king, he will be an old man, and I can say this, we're exactly the same age, born in the same year, he'll be an unattractive old man. Some in the North may be ambivalent, quite unbelievably, <coughs> about the difference between a limit of 2 degrees or 1.5 degrees of global warming. But of course, for some countries, particularly uh, the small island developing states of the Commonwealth, that the difference could scarcely be more critical, as it may literally mean the survival of their countries or their extinction. Charles clearly has a very strong sense of public duty. In the past, we've had princes of Wales, more than one, um, who simply led the good life and pursued wine, women and song. Um, and Charles has done none of that. So the monarchy as an institution uh, commands immensely strong support. I don't expect that to change very much. But there are also individual popularity rankings conducted by the opinion polls uh, about the different members of the royal family. Um, and there Prince Charles does not score very high. Uh, and I don't expect that necessarily to change when he becomes king. will be seen in a way as a transition to his son, much younger, more glamorous, um, and of course William will be on the throne a lot longer. I think that William and Kate mirror in many ways a young Queen and Philip. Uh, they're not so young now, but in that respect they will certainly give um, the monarchy, and after such old monarchs, um, a sense of modernity that is probably needed for, for to help with its continuity.